Okay, so here is the reference photo we'll be using on this quick study exercise. So when I say that word quick study, what that means is that we're going to do this pretty rapidly so that you get some practice in on how to do one point perspective and apply it to something in the real world. Now this is a photograph I've taken. It's of an old barn. And you can see what I'm doing there is I'm, I'm doing this really for you guys. I'm taking a pastel pencil and drawing on top of it so you can see how to find a vanishing point. The spot where all the lines converge is your vanishing point. Like with our last exercise, I'm going to have you start out by making a frame. So working on a smaller sheet of paper, this border measures 6 inches by 8 inches. And I'm doing this again with vine charcoal so that you can see it. You are welcome to do it with either vine charcoal or with a regular graphite pencil. And there's my vanishing point slightly in the middle but a little bit more to the right. You can see I put that horizon line a little bit higher than the center so it's not quite in the middle there for the horizon line. You don't have to label the horizon line by the way. So I'm starting out with that frame. So this is, if you look at the barn, there's kind of a framed out image that you can see. And that's really the outside of the barn and a barn door is open so you can see inside. So it's like the front of a box and the box has a lid that's kind of opened up. Now I'm going to work specifically on that interior scene. So technically this is like doing a drawing inside of a building. In this case, it's this old barn. I'm first going to that horizontal beam that's in the background. And I'm looking at that opening as kind of a rectangle. And when I'm looking through that barn door opening, I'm evaluating where does that beam hit in relationship to the rectangle. And you can kind of see that there's a sort of a T shape where the vertical beam meets the horizontal one. You want to be sure and get that in. So you can see that's what I have right now. It looks like a long T. And then I want to make sure that I connect up the vanishing point to the beams. So here you can see me lining that up. So here's where that one point perspective comes into play because each beam needs to angle back to that same vanishing point. Now you're going to see me do something that I haven't taught you yet and that is that you don't necessarily have to continue your line all the way back to that vanishing point. You can stop your line if you know you're not going to need it. And on something like this it's a study, so you don't have to be 100% accurate when you're doing it, but you do want to get the gist of what you're trying to get down. So you want the perspective to be correct. Those gaps in between the beams do need to be equal distance. It's something that I worked on later too, is trying to make sure that they're equal distance apart, otherwise they'll start to look funky. And again, make sure that they are all angling back to that one vanishing point. To be clear, when you're looking through that opening in the barn and looking inside, that horizon line isn't exactly dead center. It's a little bit above the center mark. Okay, so now you're going to go ahead and draw those hay bales in. Remember that each hay bale is a cylinder. It's kind of like a marshmallow that's on its side. The hay bales that are farther back will be smaller than the hay bales that are closer to the viewer. And you want to just see how each hay bale aligns up with the other. Look at the negative space too. Technically, I think there's about three and a quarter of a hay bale showing. So just getting the angles right and making sure that the hay bale in front is bigger than the one behind helps a lot with the perspective. There were two pipes that I saw above the hay bale to the right, and they're angled. You do have to draw a vanishing point to get the height where those pipes end. So that's why there's a vanishing point and there's an um, angled line going away. So all objects 
unless you're seeing the front side of the object, obey the rules of the vanishing point and the rules of perspective. So there is a slight opening on the door, meaning that you can see the door jam. So there's a slight strip of wood because that, that wall is a little bit thick. It's a couple inches thick. And you can see that to the right there. And then the door itself, the one that swung open like a cupboard door there, the barn door, also follows that vanishing point. There's a couple other lines on the door that follow it as well. Even the handle, which you don't necessarily have to put in. I just did because that handle is pretty cool. It looks like it was a handmade handle back in the day. And it's all made out of wood. So you can see, I use my uh, tool, my triangle drafting tool a lot. But you'll also see me later on free handing without any ruler. The boards on the door do follow the rule of perspective, which means that you're going to have to get them wider and wider apart the farther away they get from the vanishing point. So the more the, they go left, the wider they get. The closer they get to the vanishing point, the tighter those vertical lines go. If you are unsure if a line is supposed to angle back to the vanishing point, check it on your actual photo reference. That should be an indication. The angled line, that angled bar across the door, does not conform to one point perspective, but I did cite the angle to make sure it was correct. Those barn doors to the right are quite a bit wider than the door, like the boards on the door. So this is a pretty good sketch, but it could benefit tremendously from some value. And this is a black and white drawing, which is easier to convert because we're working with a black and white medium for now. And uh, once you get, you can see it happening right now, like you look for those darkest values. I'm working on inside that interior space right now, so inside of the barn. And you want to relate one value to the next to make sure you have the value hierarchy correct. So that's like the, which one's the darkest, which one's the next darkest. So you just want to compare because that roof's pretty dark, but it's not as dark as that back wall. And then there are some like areas in the back wall where you can see through, like there's either some holes in the barn or some cracks and you can see the daylight coming through and that's kind of cool to capture that as well. Studies don't have to be perfect, but they can really help as like a pre-step really to painting. So this is something that you could do and you could find it useful. Also, if you're in a hurry to document something, it's a great technique.